Hello everyone and welcome to Harv's World for my Raven Poured Walkthrough. This is a beginner's tutorial taking all of the skills that I have learned playing Farming Simulator and putting them into a Raven Poured Walkthrough tutorial for beginners. If you're not a beginner, you're welcome to, to watch, of course. <laughs> but um, this is going to be taking all of the basics and putting them to practical use to help new players to the game understand exactly what a veteran player would be doing and looking for when they start a new map and the skills that they use when they're working that map so i'm going to get started in what might be considered a slightly unconventional way and i'm going to have the new players install some mods now the reason i'm going to do this all the veterans know that the mods are what make the game now don't get me wrong giants has provided us with a really sweet game the base game is perfectly fine, no problems with it, but it's the mods that really build depth and functionality into the game. The mod makers are doing amazing work. I don't know what kind of compensation they get for it other than maybe something to put on their resume or um, I, I honestly don't know. But they do amazing things. They, they have provided every single map for this game with the exception of the two that you start with in the base game and hundreds if not thousands of different tools tractors whatever you can think of a modder has added it to the game and these are fully supported by giants so supported in fact that giants has included mods in their game right here on the menu and we're going to start right there now this is our mod menu. It's all broken down into equipment categories. And there's hundreds, literally hundreds. I mean, there's a couple dozen, maybe three dozen different categories. And there are multiple, multiple mods under each category. We are going to install 11 to get started as a new player because I think they're important and will make your gameplay easier to begin with it will give you an understanding of how to install mods how to use mods and then you know once you uh, feel comfortable in the game you could download i i probably got 700 at least that i use off and on so i am not using any mods that you won't be using in the game and I will show you right here. You can see my downloaded mod list. Now, the only things that I'm showing right now are the DLCs. And I do have a copy of each of the DLCs, but I am not going to be using them for this playthrough. I'm going to be doing everything exactly as you will be able to do. And this applies to both console and PC gamers. Now, I'm a PC gamer. I don't know console commands. I will be working in PC commands. So console gamers, you can do everything that I do. You're just going to have to sort out the commands a little bit by yourselves. I apologize. Um, so let's get started. Let's get going. I'm sure you're all stoked to get into this and start learning about Farming Simulator. An absolutely fantastic game. So what are we going to do for mods? Well, I've got 11 picked out and the easiest way for me to get you to them is for you to use the search function right down here. So if I click on search, I can type in what I'm looking for, and the first one is the Bruins, B-R-U-N-S. I hit enter, and I want the Bruins MBA 12,000. This is a fertilizer spreader, you can see right here. It also spreads lime. And when I select it, I can hit details here. It'll take me into this window, and I simply click install and OK, and that's going to be added to the download list. I'm going to go back out to my main screen again, select search, and this time I want to type in camera. What I'm looking for is disable vehicle camera collision. If I go into details there, what this does is it prevents the camera from bouncing all over the place when you drive past a building. So we are going to install that. Back up to our main screen again, hit search. This time we want to type 6M and we are looking for the Lizard Subsoiler 6M. Click on details, click install. And what this is, it's a plow subsoiler 
to help you with preparing your fields. It's a very popular mod. A lot of people use it. A lot of people. Okay, so we go back to our main screen again. And now we are looking for the milling machine. And I'm just going to type in milling. And the milling machine pops right up. Hit, on, hit details. And we are going to install that bad boy. And more explanation about the functionality of these things will come up through the gameplay. But for now, we just want to get through installing these mods. The next thing you're looking for is the CSZ. Or for those in Europe, CSZ. And we want the CSZ Equipment Pack. What this is, is a bunch of tools that you can add on to your loading equipment. So if you have a forklift, um, instead of forks, you could use any one of these pieces of equipment, buckets, um, different hay forks, stuff like that. So we want to install that. Next up on our little list of mods, we want to type in multi. Multi is going to get us to two mods that we want. The first one is the multi silo shop. Click on details. This is going to be a silo that will sell fertilizer, lime, and something else. Oh, seed. Yes, that all important thing that allows you to grow crops. <laughs> so let's install that. Now this time we're just going to go back to our search for multi and we're going to go down the menu to the right and we want the grain silo set with multi fruit. Details on that. Now this provides us with a bunch of different silos that we can use over the course of our gameplay um, but we definitely want to install those so we've got those downloading and now we want to search for the all-important toolbox and the toolbox is this little kit right here it will be a place where we can repair and customize our vehicles easily accessed on our own farm and we are going to install that mod next we are going to search for horse s-h-o-r-s-c-h like so and we're looking for the horse aggravation horse pack go to details and this has a multiple multiple bunch of tools um, that we will be able to use on our farm great great pack and this is provided by giants for free I might add so we can install the horse pack and the last couple we are looking for a couple of John Deere pieces of equipment the first we're going to type in 690 and we want the John Deere 690 square baler this is a great baler for beginners and I will explain to you exactly why when, when we have a cause to use it. So let's install that. And now we are going to search for 8350. And that's going to give us a John Deere Cedar. Another great beginning tool. Go to our details. And we can see right here. It's a lovely little cedar. Nice and simple too. And let's install that. So now that we're back to our main screen, those are the 11 mods that I think beginners should start with. Again, in three months, you're going to have a folder full of hundreds of mods from a bunch of different websites. Be careful where you get your mods from. These are all Giants approved. They have all been tested by Giants. and uh, But there are many, many websites out there that have other mods that you might find useful, helpful, or fun. Just check the files. <laughs> make sure you're not getting something I've been very lucky so far um, but you never know anyway with that said if we back out of the mods it's gonna ask us if we want to restart our game and we're gonna say yes and so when I get back we'll get going Okay, so mods have been installed. Now I'm going to start a career. And I need to find an open save game. 
it's going to be 17 for me and I'm going to click continue I want to start on new farmer mode and we are going to Ravenport the beginning farm the one farm everybody starts on I know I started on it learned a lot of lessons the hard way I wish I would have had a walkthrough like this when I was getting started so we move on and character creation you can set your character up however you like there aren't a great number of options everybody kind of ends up looking the same um, but you can pick and choose what you like so once you've got that done now we're going to go to mod selection i'm going to deselect all because i want to not use the um, expansion packs that i have and those show up in this mod list also, but we want the Bruins MBA. We installed the CSZ equipment pack, the grain silo set with multi-fruit, the lizard subsoiler 6M, the multi-silo shop, disable camera collision, the milling machine, and the toolbox. So those are the mods that we have installed. Make sure they're check marked. And we're going to hit start. And now it's going to take a little while for the game to actually load. Okay, so as we enter the game, they're going to ask us if we'd like to take a guided tour. Well, guess what? We're not going to do that. You're welcome to if you'd like to go ahead and take the, the guided tour. We are going to bypass that for now. They're going to give us the opportunity to do it later. But we are going to pass. So here we are overlooking our new farm in Ravenport. The first thing that we're going to do, however, is go into our settings menu and this is our primary menu. We click on the little tractor icon. This is our settings. Now to get started, for time scale, you can set this to whatever you are comfortable with. You can run it in real time. Um, a lot of people stick with five times. It really just depends on your play style. Economic difficulty, I recommend for beginners to start on easy. It just gives you a little bit more money as you sell crops and do different things. Dirt, we don't care about. Um, I am turning automatic engine start off. You're welcome to leave it on if you'd like. Um, it's your choice, really. I'm just used to having it turned off, so I have to manually start my tractors every time I get in one of them. Stop and grow braking, totally up to you. Um, now, one important one here are the helper options. There are five of them. And what these do is they tell, if you're using a helper, it tells the helper to buy fuel, seed, fertilizer, slurry, or manure. Now, the stuff that the helpers buy is very expensive. And not only that, let's say I have a seeder and I'm trying to plant crops and it's full of seed. Well, the helper will never use the seed in the seeder. The helper will buy every bit of seed that goes on a field. So we definitely don't want them buying anything. We will take care of that ourselves. Now, as far as plant growth goes, fast is good for beginners. You might slow this down later, but fast is gonna be good because we want our crops to grow quickly so we can sell them off and make as much money as we can up front. Now, plant withering. What this does is if you don't harvest your crops soon enough, they will wither and die and you will lose the crop. We want to leave that off. Right now, crop destruction is turned on. What crop destruction is going to do is if you drive over your field with the wrong tires on your tractor, it will destroy your crops. To get started, we are turning that off. Now we start with periodic plowing turned off, but I'm going to turn that one on. I like periodic plowing. I think it uh, actually is beneficial to the gameplay. And it doesn't mean that we have to, re have to plow all the time. It means certain crops require us to plow if we plant them. Corn is a big one. Uh, sugar beets are another. So if you plant those two crops, and there are a couple other. Um, you'll have to plow before you can plant anything else on that field. We are going to turn keep lime required turned on. This means that we have to put lime on our field after every third harvest. Otherwise, we take a penalty on the crop, the next crop that we grow. 
Now weeds are a bit of a nuisance. I don't think new players should start with weeds and I'm turning them off. We might add those in later just so you can get a feel for how to manage them. But for now, we're going to have them turned off. And your autosave interval, that is completely up to you. But I'm turning it off. I've gotten used to turning it off. And I, I like to save my game manually. So autosave is probably good when you're getting started. So now in order to save all those settings, we are just going to do a quick save game and back out of our menu. Now let's go down and take a look at our new farm. Now we've got multiple buildings sitting around here. We've got this lovely red barn. We've got this beat up old building. Lots of buildings sitting around. There's a couple down here. There's one over here. These buildings are just for show. They provide no practical purpose whatsoever. You can't open the doors. You can't store equipment in them. You can't put bales in them. They're just for show. So what we're going to do is this. We are going to get started by going into our garage. Now for me that is hitting the, the P key. It's basically the shop menu. Down at the bottom we can see garage and this is going to show us everything that we own from equipment all the way down to all of the buildings on our property. Of the buildings on the property we're going to keep the farmhouse but we're going to start selling all these off. We don't need decorations right now we need cash. So we're going to sell the farm garage, going to sell the farm shed, we're going to sell the old barn, we're going to sell farm storage that doesn't store anything, <laughs> and we're going to sell the farm stable that doesn't stable anything. Now we will keep Easy Shed 1 because that does provide some functionality, however, We've got this large grain silo sitting here. It holds 200,000 liters, which is nice, but it only holds wheat, barley, canola, corn, oats, sunflowers, and soybeans. We're going to sell that too. And you can see right here, there are some crops already stored in there, but it's going to pay us for all of those. So when we sell this, we're going to make all the money off of those crops that were stored. So now that that's gone, we can start looking at our starting equipment. Now we've got a Fiat tractor here, not a bad tractor, but we can do better. So I'm going to sell that Fiat. Now I'll tell you, the, the K7210 Pro is one of the best tractors in the game. And the reason why is because it's very cost effective, but we don't need two. So I'm going to sell one of those off also. Now we've got this new Holland TX32 Harvester. It's fine. Nope, not, not bad. But we can do a heck of a lot better than that. So I'm going to sell that off too. And this is the header for that harvester. It's only a 4 meter header. And we're going to get rid of that also. We've got this small little dinky cultivator right here. We can do better than that. We're going to sell that bad boy off. Now these SB1000s, these are weights for our tractors. We only need one. And so we're going to sell one of those. Now I'm also going to sell off the cedar here. Or this, yes, yeah, cedar. But there's something I need to take care of with that first. But you can see right now we had a hundred thousand dollars to start with as a new farmer and all of our equipment. Now, after selling everything, we've got six hundred and seventeen thousand three hundred and ten dollars. And we're not done yet. So up here at the top of the hill is my cedar. And if you don't know, in order to hook up to something either in front or behind you simply get close to it and you'll get a pop-up that, that asks if you want to attach for me I'm gonna hit Q 
and now I've got the cedar attached and ready to go. And I'm going to run this down by the farmhouse. Now the reason that I didn't sell this off immediately is because if you look down to the lower right hand side you'll see that it has a thousand liters of wheat or a thousand liters of seed in it and I want to keep that seed. I can use that to plant whatever crop I want. I just don't want to plant it with this cedar. So we're going to go here and I'm going to hit the unload command which for me is I and you can see right over there a pallet of seed just appeared. I unloaded my cedar and now I can sell this off so I go back to my shop menu go to the garage select that cedar and sell that bad boy off get it out of here we don't want it okay now we're cooking with gas so we're at six hundred and twenty seven thousand dollars not too shabby now I just want to come up here and grab this trailer because I'm going to be working in this area a little bit and I want to get it out of the way when I try to put items down it's going to be in a position that's going to be um, not very effective for me so with that said now it's time to spend some of this money this is when it starts to get fun the first thing that we're going to do go back into our shop menu and we're going to look at this barn icon right here and we sold our silo we're definitely going to need a silo so we're going to replace that first so if i highlight silos and double click on them scroll all the way to the end i can see where this says mod right here these are the multi-fruit silos that we installed and we want the small multi-fruit silo it holds a hundred thousand liters but you can see it holds everything that our old silo did but it also holds a whole ton of other stuff anything that you have you can store in this silo if i click on details now it takes me out to my farm and gives me this object to throw down somewhere and you can look at the price and see how much so we know this is hundred and twenty one thousand dollars but if you look at the price in the controls menu it's the second one down after back it says 121.452 well what it's doing is it's adjusting the price for how much the ground has to be shifted underneath the silo in order to make it work and so by adjusting a little bit moving it here a little bit moving it there a little bit we get that as close to 121,000 as we can we don't want the ground to adjust any more than it has to because then it'll get really funky and we are just going to select and plop that down right there and now we've got a lovely new silo now while we are in here and we're placing items we're going to go into our miscellaneous placeables we are going to select the multi silo now this is where we can buy seed fertilizer and lime we're going to select that and again it's going to take us out here where we can place it now keep in mind that this has a spout on it i don't know if you can see it very well but the spout right now is facing right toward me and i'm just going to make a little bit of adjustment so i can see exactly how this is lined up That's probably about right and I'm just gonna put this bad boy right here easily accessible by my equipment right next to this road and we're just gonna park it right there there we go now in the same menu we've got our toolbox and we definitely want a toolbox now this is two hundred and ninety nine dollars not a bad deal for a place that we can repair our equipment and I'm just going to put that right over here by the farmhouse. Spin it around so that that green circle is facing out so you have easy access to it. And I'm just going to plop it down right there. And now you can see all I have to do is pull my tractor right up next to this gold icon and I will be able to work on it. 
outstanding. We are doing very well at this point. Now, one last thing that I want to buy is important to me is a power washer. This will help keep our, keep our vehicles clean. And I think I'm going to just put that uh, just right out here by our shed. I can bring my tractor over here, use the pressure washer, and hose it down. So, now that we've gotten rid of all of our extraneous buildings, we've got things on our farm that we can actually use to get the job done. Now this particular silo starts with what is a fill mark. It's this red thing. If you want to leave that on so you know where to line up, be my guest. I'm going to click and turn that off, but you can turn it on, on and off if you want to. Okay. Now we're cooking with gas. Well, we've got all the buildings that we need. And we've got everything on our farm that we're going to have to have for the moment. So now let's buy some equipment. We go back into our shop and now we're going to look at the tractor icon. And this is anything that runs on its own power. The first thing we want to do is, is uh, get a small tractor. And the reason we want this, the reason I didn't keep the other case that I sold it off was because it, it, can't, it can't run a front loader. So we can't use it to forklift or anything. But this small Fent favorite, it only runs $76,000. If we go into that, it's a nice little tractor. Now, when you're picking tractors or any other piece of equipment, there's one major factor that you want to take into consideration, and that is horsepower. And you have to think about what job is this tractor going to be doing. Now, I know a, a small tractor will be good to do smaller chores around the farm that don't require heavy lifting, um, you know, fertilizing, things like that. So. A small tractor is good, plus it will allow us to um, use a front loader. <coughs> and we're going to need some front loader, something to lift with from time to time. Now, this tractor will go up to 150 horsepower, and we do that by looking at our engine setup and selecting a different option. So for another 17,500, we go up from 115 to 150 horsepower. We're going to go with that. And then we also, like I said, we want the front loader attachment. That's going to add this piece of equipment here. And all told, this tractor is only going to run $95,000. That's a great deal. We are going to buy that up for $95,000. Now, just because we have a front loader attacher on it doesn't mean that it'll lift anything because we need to add. We go into our tools menu. And we can see right here front loaders and this is the actual piece of equipment that the tractor will use to do the lifting with we are going to grab the smaller one the fc30 only fifty four hundred dollars and we will buy that now we need something to lift with and a lot of people would assume well a fork pallet forks no you do not want pallet forks and i'll tell you why because the physics of pallets in the game are pretty unstable. They will give you nothing but headaches, I promise you. So with that said, we've got our CSC pack. Remember all that stuff I said you could attach to your loaders? Well, we are looking for a particular piece of equipment, very popular. It's the big bag handler. Now, don't let the name fool you. This is not just for big bags. This will handle pretty much anything, including pallets, and it does it much more effectively than forks. So we're going to buy one of those. Now we're cooking. So we've got our tractor ready to go. What else do we need? Well, we need a harvester. Remember we had this New Holland TX32? Well, it's small. It holds 5,600 liters. It's got 160 horsepower, we can see right here. Um, it's okay, but it, like I said, we can do a lot better if we just spend a little extra money. And this MF Activa 7347 Massey Ferguson is going to do us a lot better. 8,600 liters, 306 horsepower. 
and we can harvest pretty much any crop we want to plant. So we're going to take a look at that. We're going to leave it as is. It's a beautiful harvester and we're going to buy one of those. Now, as I said, when you have a harvester, you need to buy a header. And this little icon right here, it looks like a puzzle piece. This tells you what you can buy to use with this harvester. So we could buy a free flow, we could buy a Helianthus, a 5700, or an HS8. So if we go back to our tools menu and we look right here at headers, now this is the Helianthus right here. It's small. This is the free flow. The Massey Ferguson, this is specifically built for the harvester we just bought. So we are going to buy that particular header. Now, we've got the header, we've got the harvester, but headers are wide and they don't travel down roads well, so we need something to tow it on, and they make special trailers for that called header trailers. So we are just going to go to the smallest, because this is not a massive, massive header. We're going to go with the Leguan 24 for $4,000. And we're going to buy one of those. Okay, now we're cooking. Now, something else that we are going to need right out of the gate, we want to find fertilizer technology right here. And remember that Brunes MBA 12,000? Well, that is fertilizer technology. It will hold fertilizer. That's this icon here. And it will also spread lime right here. It has a 24 meter spread, which means it spreads fertilizer 24 meters wide and it holds 8,000 liters. This is the volume or the quantity right here. So we are definitely going to buy one of those. Now, right now we are at $114,304 and we have bought a ton of equipment. Let's see where we're at at this point. Now, we can open our map and looking at the map we've got a lot going on but if you look right down here in the lower right hand corner you'll see that these fields are green the numbers are green instead of white like these that means we own them and if we click on this lands icon right here it will show us the property that we own it will highlight it in green so we own all of this. This is what we're getting started with. And if you click on any other plot, you can see what it would cost us to buy. So field 16, if we wanted it, 137,000. If we wanted this big field eight right here, well, that's 1.2 million. So we are starting small, but, but we're going to make the most of it. So the other thing the map does for us, it shows us all of our shop or all of our, <laughs> all of our different uh, locations. Like we've got a spinnery here. We've got a biomass heating plant here. We have got a barn here, but right here, this is the important one. We have the shop. And if we click on the shop, we can see it right here. If we hit visit, it will automatically warp us to the shop and we can see all of our lovely equipment parked right out here where we've just purchased it. Now there's one other piece of equipment that we need to buy that I just remembered and that's going to be a seed or something to put crop in the ground with. And for that we are looking for that John Deere that we installed the John Deere 8350. And that's going to hold seed, it's going to hold fertilizer and this machine offers the possibility to seed directly. No previous cultivating or cultivating or plowing necessary. So this is what's known as a direct drill. It will automatically put seed in the ground without having to prep the field. And that's a very good thing. So we are going to buy one of those. And that's got us at $108,304. So we're doing very, very, very well. 
except I still need one more piece of equipment. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, trying to keep this all sorted in my head and um, struggling a little bit. Anyway, we need we do need something to prep our fields from time to time. And this is going to allow us to do some other tasks too. So we want to look at our plows. I'm going to scroll all the way to the right. This is the mod, the Subsoiler 6M we installed. We are going to buy one of those. Now, keep in mind, as I was saying earlier, how do you know what to buy? Well, the big deal, the biggest issue to start with is the horsepower. Now, if we're looking at the subsoil, and we could do it from this screen too, what we care about is the horsepower requirement. Do we have a tractor with 180 horsepower? Because that's what this tool requires. If we don't have a tractor, then we need to consider something smaller that we can that that our our equipment can manage. Or we need a bigger tractor to be able to use this. We will be able to meet this horsepower requirement with the stuff we have at the moment. And that goes for anything. Like if I'm looking at the John Deere Cedar that we just bought, 60 horsepower. Now the other things you can take into consideration is how wide is it? Well, this is six meters wide. That's not bad for small fields. A lot of these run only three, like the one we got rid of, that was three. We will be able to do twice the work in half the time because we can do six meters at a time instead of three. So you have to take in this to consideration the size of your job, how big your fields are, how much time you want to spend on them, and how much horsepower the tool is going to require. And can you meet the horsepower requirement? That's what it takes to determine what tools you need. And you'll get a feel for that. I mean, the horsepower requirement, that's easy. You just look at the stats and say, yep, these match up, I can use it. But when it comes to field size and equipment size, you know, you can buy equipment that's too big to use on a field because the field just isn't big enough to manage that level of equipment. But again, you'll get a feel for that. And at some point, I will probably just walk through this whole store menu and go through each of these categories and let you know exactly what they do. If that sounds like a good idea, let me know in the comments because um, I, I kind of get the feeling that could be helpful for a lot of people. If you agree, I will be happy to do so. So with that said, I think we've officially purchased everything I want to purchase. <laughs> Maybe, yes, no, this is our official starting lineup for our farm on Ravenport. Now we still have our case tractor and there's a little something I want to do with that before we're done today. But to get our front loader, we're just going to pull right up into it. It's going to give us the option to attach. We're going to do that. And then to, to grab our tool, we just pull up to that as well. You'll get the pop up asking if you want to attach and we do. So there we go. Now, equipment like this front loader, it has multiple functions on it. You can tip the, the loading arms in front. You can raise and lower a bunch of different options. Again, these are things that you will get a feel for over time. It just takes some practice. So keep that in mind. The next thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull out this header trailer. give it some room to work or give our uh, harvester some room to work because it's going to need to load the header onto the trailer. Next I'm going to raise my arms way up in the sky so that I can come over here and grab our new subsoiler. And I've got a three point hitch attachment on the front of this tractor. Now, I can't plow this way, I can't subsoil this way, but I can certainly transport this way. So when the link comes up, I'm going to attach, and this one I'm going to hit X and it will fold that subsoiler right up like so. Easy to transport. Foldable tools like this are wonderful. 
makes for easy transportation. And now I still have my hitch on the back that I can use and pull one of these mobile units back with me. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the Bruins MBA and this ugly configuration <laughs> we are going to roll right on back to the farm with. Nobody said it was pretty. But as long as it works, it works. And sometimes that's the best you can hope for when it comes to uh, managing these chores in Farming Simulator. So yeah, we've, we've got a very good setup here. Um, this is going to be a great starting setup. Now, I like to start with a larger fertilizer spreader because it gives us options very significant money-making options and I will go into that in greater detail in a future um, episode of this tutorial but for now we're just going to focus on getting the equipment back to the farm now I'm going to need to drive the harvester back and I'm going to have to run this tractor up one more time and pick up the cedar to bring it back but I think while I've got this fertilizer spreader hooked up I'm gonna go pull right up here to our brand new our brand new fertilizer silo and if I pull this trailer right under you'll see the option to start filling if I hit R, and I don't want lime right now, I want fertilizer, I'm going to go ahead and fill this bad boy up with the fertilizer. You can see it topping off right there, and that was $640, which is a great price for 8,000 liters of fertilizer, let me tell you. That's one of the reasons we're using that. It's going to save us some money in the long run. Okay, so I'm going to drop this stuff off. the fertilizer spreader. Whoa, that's funky. What's going on there? Yes. Loads of funkiness. <laughs> okay, I don't know what happened there, but it's it's kind of sorted now. Alright, let's go get rid of our subsoiler. Yep, we'll drop that right there. Okay. Now, we can go back to our map and get right back to the shop again. We'll visit. And let's take a look at our brand new, lovely, red and white Massey Ferguson Harvester. Let's see about getting this back to the farm. And actually, we'll be able to use this pretty darn soon. So in order to attach a header, all you got to do is, again, just pull right up to the header and it's going to give you the option to attach. And now we want to load the header onto this trailer. So we'll swing that bad boy around. And the general idea is to line up the center of the header with the center of this yellow yellow section of the trailer. We don't want to get too far forward because we need some room to work up front. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now header trailers can be a little bit finicky, a little bit touchy. We're going to try just about right there. We detach our header and it should lock into that trailer. Looks like it's sitting okay. And the great thing about harvesters is they do have the ability to attach and hook up. And this is why we didn't want the header too far forward on the trailer because we need room for that ta the tail of the harvester to swing like so. You can see what I'm talking about right there. So let's get this thing back to the farm. This is a nice basic harvester. doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles on it but it's got just what we need to get the jobs done we'll have getting started in Ravenport 
Now I really expect us to be successful and be able to make a lot of money in a very short amount of time. I think we're going to be able to do that if we take advantage of all of the options that we have at our disposal. So what I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this harvester back to the farm. I'm going to grab that new little fence and drive back up to the shop and get our John Deere cedar and run it back to the farm. So I will see you when all of our equipment is where we want it to be. All right, so this is the last piece of equipment that I'm hauling back. Our nice little John Deere planter cedar, cedar, not planter, cedar. Now there's just a couple more quick steps we're going to take to get fully set up. The first thing I want to do is grab our new case, or our case. I guess it's new to us. We're brand new on this farm. And I'm going to bring it right over here and I'm going to show you how this toolbox works. So if you pull up right next to this gold icon and activate it, open vehicle options, we can now customize this tractor. Now, one of the the great thing, the thing that makes this such a great tractor is, first of all, it's it's cheap, but it also runs up to a hundred and or two hundred and sixty one horsepower. And we're going to go ahead. It's forty five thousand dollars to upgrade that, but we are going to take that upgrade because two hundred and sixty one horsepower on our small fields is going to carry us a long, long way. So yes, we are going to customize that for forty five thousand dollars. That takes us down to 45,164. Oh, and I gotta put, pick up the weight again because whenever, whenever you customize it, unattaches everything from your tractor. So let's just park back over here. And the last thing that we're gonna do, nope, not that. We're gonna go back to our shop. I'm gonna look at our tools and we're gonna look at chainsaws. Now we're not going to use these often, but we are going to use them, and we're going to use them very soon. There's four different chainsaws you can choose from. They are all identical in every way except for what they look like. So choose your brand. I'm going with the McCullough, and it's only $1,000, so I'm going to buy that. And we have officially spent every dollar we're going to spend to get started. We still have a farmhouse. We've got a storage shed where we can put our equipment away. We've got a silo that will hold pretty much anything we want it to hold. We've got a place to buy our seed and fertilizer. And we've got fields ready to be worked. And that's going to be it for part one of this Ravenport walkthrough. I hope you found it educational, entertaining, or otherwise. If you did, do me a favor. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below many more episodes to come and hopefully we can get all of these beginners going on the right foot so they enjoy the game and giants has even more reason to keep it going i love the new players that's why i do this for you <laughs> anyway like i said don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below and until next time take care